Hello and welcome to a special preview edition of Inclusive Futures. Uh, what we want to do today is to give you a sneak preview into what is happening this summer. My name is Neil Leach. I'm one of the initiators of this project, the Digital Futures Project, along with uh, Philip Yuan from Tong University, Shanghai. Um, today, we want to um, give you some sense of what is being planned for the summer. Uh, if Digital Futures World last year was the biggest ever online free event ever staged with 12,000 applications for, <clears throat> for, uh, for 80 workshops, this year it's going to be even bigger. We've already passed the 100 mark in terms of workshops, um, and it's going to be the most extensive, uh, most inclusive um, event ever staged in terms of a, a kind of festival of workshops, um, uh, uh, discussions, lectures, um, conferences, and, and exhibitions. So today, um, um, I'm going to be, the, the, the order of what we'll be doing today is, um, uh, I will first be handing over to uh, my colleague, uh, Philip Yuan, who will give you some sense about uh, the history and the mission of Digital Futures, how it started and how it began to grow. Um, I will be talking more uh, explicitly about this particular event, uh, Inclusive Futures, um, what has been prepared for the summer. And you can see on your screen exactly what we have got in terms of the dates and so on. Then uh, Chao Yan will be talking about the schedule, about the application um, period, um, uh, and about how you can apply for this particular um, uh, set of workshops and all the other events that are going on. Then <clears throat> we're passing on to Virginia Melnick, who will be analyzing, giving you some data about the workshops um, over the years and give you a sense of, um, of, of what's been happening and also give you some sense <clears throat> of, of the, the regions that we'll be covering this year. Then we'll be passing on to, uh, to uh, we'll be introducing each of our regional managers who will be talking and um, introducing themselves and talking about the highlights of what they're planning for their workshops uh, in their own particular region. And finally, we will be um, uh, moving on to questions. So if you have any questions, please could you forward them via um, uh, Billy Billy or YouTube. So it's my great pleasure to be able to um, introduce Philip Yuan. Um, Philip Yuan, um, since last year, has now been appointed the uh, 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 the, the assistant the associate dean for research at Tongji University. As you will know, he's a very famous architect in his own right, Archi, the, the principal of Archi Union, um, and he is he and I have been the mainstay between behind uh, digital futures over uh, over the years. So um, I'd like to welcome uh, Philip Yuan. Um, to say a few words um, about the history and the mission of Digital Futures. Welcome, Philip. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. Uh, welcome. Um, come back to Digital Futures. We have a lot of friends here. I can see some uh, very famous, uh, very familiar faces, and also we have some very young faces because it's great uh, to have so many uh, young friends uh, stay with us uh, uh, to uh, set up uh, Digital Futures as a, a special platform, sharing platform for the world. So um, firstly, uh, I want, I'd like to welcome to our preview session of Digital Future 2021. Uh, I'm from Shanghai. Right now I'm traveling in Hainan, which is uh, very, uh, very south part of China. Uh, just come, coming, coming back to the hotel from the, ho from the airport. And tonight uh, I'm very excited to share with you uh, the latest information and the detailed plan in upcoming summer uh, with um, uh, all the organizers here. Tonight, you and me uh, with our core members uh, of Digital Futures organizing the committee from all over the world. Uh, we will be online and send our greetings to, uh, to everyone. So let's uh, start. So here is a very short video, briefly introduce the history and uh, the moments of Digital Futures from 2011 to 2020. Uh, at the very beginning, um, Digital Futures is very young. Uh, we launched in 2011 by me and Philip Newlich, uh, Professor Newlich, and also our Dean, um, uh, Professor Li Xiangning also joined us. At that time, I think I still remember uh, USC, the dean uh, from USC, whose name is Qin Yima, 
and want to uh, send, uh, set up AAC in China. Um, and New Rich at that time is a professor who teach in USC and professor teaching in Tongji University. And the two things um, actually help us to set up this collaboration at the very beginning for a, a series of uh, workshops, conference and exhibitions held at the very beginning by Tongji University and USC. Uh, from the, the, the 2012 and 2011, uh, 2013, actually, uh, we uh, changed to be um, a special sponsor by Tongji University. And also, New Leach play a very individual roles in, in the whole process. Uh, so, we invited a lot of very interesting friends from all over the world, including very famous uh, architects and uh, uh, expertise specialize uh, in uh, computational design and robotic fabrication. Over the past 10 years, Data Futures have evolved from a local event, a Shanghai event, to a global phenomenon. Especially last year, um, the pandemic um, gave us a lot um, of trouble, but actually uh, the team is working so well to make it uh, live online. Uh, so it's a great uh, pleasure this year is uh, 2021. We want to make an uh, online and offline uh, combination uh, for the digital future events. So today, uh, to, this year, the topic will be uh, inclusive um, uh, futures, and Neil will introduce later the topic. And we have successfully invited a number of very good uh, uh, educators from the leading schools of the architecture and the architecture association to join us. Every summer, actually, the event um, to propose the showcase and the outcomes of the workshop is, is extremely good. Um, so the, the claims of some installations, maybe you can see right now, it's so very easy, maybe not very developed, but you can see the evolution um, from a technology perspective, how we're learning from each other and sharing from each other. Uh, it's not just the artworks, it's a lot of them uh, experimental. Sometimes we test to failure in the bookshops. These experimental prototypes and designing projects actually educate a generation. Uh, I think uh, right now more than 20,000 um, uh, students and architects participate in the futures in the, over the past 10 years. So the, uh, based on this kind of uh, I think we're not only uh, learning from each other, but also actually we influence a lot um, the, uh, the, 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 the practice. Uh, especially, uh, for example, uh, we have the Office Archie Union here in Shanghai and uh, collaborate with Fab Union, actually doing a lot of very experimental uh, robotic fabrication works. You can see uh, later, uh, maybe we can introduce um, some of them. Every year we have a special topic from 2011. And the first event, and the topic is digital future. Uh, so the why the latest um, few years, we keep uh, this name, but uh, change the digital future to digital futures. Uh, and every year we invited um, a very interesting friends. Uh, for example, the second year, uh, XXL super tall buildings, we invite- we invite tall men and also including uh, uh, Ding Ma, Ma Qingyun, and uh, Ma Yansu. We, we name as Du Ma Talks, to, uh, it, which is very uh, experimental and very um, um, uh, popular uh, in 2012. And uh, 2013, Interactive Shanghai. 2014, Robotic Fabrication based on the structure performance. I think that is a very early event to integrate the structure performance-based design with robotic fabrication. In 2015, uh, the topic is digital factory. Actually, Fab Union has a lot of uh, Chinese um, uh, practitioners follow this topic, set up a lot of robotics um, um, uh, factories right now in architecture discipline spreading all of, all of China. 2018, uh, uh, 2016, uh, that diagrammatic thinking in digital fabrication. We invite uh, uh, um, um, uh, Antonio Picon coming to Shanghai, making the keynotes, I remember. And he gave a very interesting uh, note to this special event. 2017, 
uh, vision, uh, visualization versus uh, materialization. And from 2017, actually, we set up international PhD program. And which uh, is keep uh, set up the, uh, the resources and uh, attract a lot of very interesting uh, professors and and keep sharing our knowledge through this platform. That's why this year we want to name as Digital Future um, PhD Consortium, which is actually starting from 2017. 2018 Cyber Future. We invite Andy Kirk, the famous philosopher, to make the keynotes, as you remember. And to, from 2019, we start of our conference, CDRF, uh, Computational Design Robotic Fabrication. And every year we have a, a special proceeding book uh, with different topic. And 2019, the topic is architecture intelligence. 2020, the topic is machine intelligence. And 2021 is material intelligence. I think we have a very good performance uh, based on these special topics. And uh, last week, the Springer um, um, Vice President of uh, uh, the East Asian coming to visit my office and tell me the last book, um, um, Architecture Intelligence in 15, uh, uh, in five months, more than 10,000 downloads of the paper because it's open source. So a lot of uh, uh, researchers download the papers from um, uh, Architecture Intelligence book. Which, which published um, only in five months. So the performance of that is really good. And also the Springer uh, uh, publisher introduced the team to the nature nature uh, team. They have a nature partner um, public publication. So probably the next year, our publication will go to the nature um, uh, 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 Springer Plus Nature uh, platform. So which helps a lot of young researchers to publish their research and actually goes to the academic um, uh, position in different universities. So that is something we want to keep um, 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 uh, keep introduced to our friends uh, in digital futures because you are not not only participate in the talks in the workshops but also you can publish your papers uh, based on your research in the workshops and based on your uh, your research uh, theoretical research you can publish your papers in the CDRF um, uh, sequence of conference. So that is the, the topic uh, from, uh, in the, uh, for the past um, 10 years. So this year, the topic will be inclusive futures. Uh, and uh, not only for that, but also uh, I think uh, we want to uh, introduce Digital Future Association in the next few weeks. And also a new enemy would like to uh, promote the PhD uh, uh, consortium, a PhD program consortium um, uh, after uh, this event uh, uh, kickoff. So that will be more content, and including the 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 uh, including the uh, our new website. And uh, uh, please uh, uh, pay attention to uh, the next step. So, and uh, also this is a manifesto. Actually, um, uh, we're offering some uh, sharing education content uh, for um, the global everyone across the world. And also growing as a digital platform, Digital Future aim to promote discussion around uh, about a broad range of contemporary issues in the discipline of architecture and associated fields, with a particular emphasis on the latest computational design and fabrication technologies. And also we want to address the broader ethical and the social issues. For example, right now the, the very big environmental concerns of the planet and uh, within our uh, ever uh, ev uh, uh, evolving highly technology culture uh, will be set up. So in the past uh, 10 years, actually we invite a lot of very important figures, uh, expertise to participate in the event, uh, including Anthony Picon, Mark Bore, Mark Xie, and uh, uh, Mi Jingying, who is right now, who is right now the, the Dean of Cornell, and Nadia Tarani. Right now we have a lot of collaboration, uh, including his project in Shanghai right now, we have some collaboration, including Tom Man, Yun Ho Zhang, uh, Eric Kohler, a lot of friends coming to this platform. So uh, firstly, I want to thanks to all the um, 
expertise and also the, the, the famous figures around the world to give us a lot of support. And in the future, I'm looking forward to invite, introduce uh, um, and uh, more um, uh, people uh, to, 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 and also uh, um, uh, Neil and me would like to uh, make the platform even open and even going to a sharing uh, platform for different voice and different uh, talks and, and to support the digital futures uh, to the whole world. This is actually the diagram you can see um, uh, for the past 10 years. At the very beginning, the applicants only like 32, uh, which is a very small number. Uh, but from 2017, I think uh, things changed. 2017, we have around 300 uh, participants apply for the workshops. And the last year is very special. I think new will also introduce on that. Um, the online um, um, virtual events attract a lot of people and also based on our sharing uh, knowledge um, uh, manifesto, I think uh, that is the uh, 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 contribution to not only uh, the, the developed uh, country, but also to like Asian, like China, India, and also we have a lot of uh, uh, students from Europe and uh, 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 South America uh, join us, I think, uh, which is like a, a global platform, actually educate a generation to attract them to uh, especially like focus on the digital futures, focus on the computational design, robotic fabrication, artificial intelligence, which actually give um, a special um, um, uh, leading uh, leading position, leading roles to the education academic world. And at the same time, in, from 2011 to 2020, New and me published a lot of books, including um, Archimangas, Philip Block. We're actually uh, collaborating with each other. Roland Snook and Matthias de Campo. I think it's not all the books, it's only part of them. I can only find this, I think around 20 books was, uh, were published, ha have been published. And especially thanks to Tongji and, um, University Press and a special thanks to Springer and also a, spe a special thanks to uh, some other press. Give a lot of support. I think more and more books if you want to publish your theoretical research and also we have some proceedings for the whole team that will lead the team goes to very academic, especially for the young generation. Some um, young lecturers, uh, assist, assistant professors, also including some PhD students. You can publish your research uh, to the world. And uh, we make it open access last year by Springer. So that, that is really helpful because everyone can download the very um, advanced research, brand new research freely. Uh, and uh, great thanks to Chungji University actually sponsored the open access for the whole book. And they want to keep um, uh, uh, um, collaborating with Springer Plus Nature. I think uh, there will be an even good platform for the future um, research. And uh, we, we, should, we should keep on do, doing that. So that is also background research, a uh, background introduction. And we have some keynote uh, keywords. Uh, you can see um, the evolution of uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, the event, what uh, special uh, we, we focus. And uh, at the very beginning, we focused on some prototype architecture study and which goes to all the way, go to some cyber uh, futures, artificial intelligence, and some real time robotic fabrication, visualization, materialization, smart city, which is a broad uh, um, um, uh, cover, uh, a, a very big uh, framework in, inside our discipline. And the last year, which goes to more social, because not only we put forward machine making talent as a topic of the CDR book, but also uh, I think is, which is interesting, the Architects United uh, actually uh, uh, attract a big army of the young generation. And during the COVID-19, actually, uh, we set up our uh, confidence to, uh, to, to, to stay together from three time zones and uh, more than 80 uh, workshops and uh, more than 12,000 applicants participate in the whole event. That is great. Uh, that makes the digital futures really 
uh, special and uh, out out of our imagination. Um, and this is the the links actually uh, we have last year for 2020. And uh, this is a uh, uh, let us just take a glimpse on um, uh, on, on the on the database. Uh, so uh, last year, actually, we attract twelve thousand two hundred ninety five applicants from thirty three countries, and which was followed by the online audience over five hundred thousand viewers from Bilibili and YouTube. That is really special. This year, two thousand twenty one, we are looking forward. These viewers should be more than one million. Uh, that is really, really, uh, uh, really the, the big influential platform. You cannot imagine and how many people around the world uh, focus on this platform. Uh, so the applicants uh, last year are, uh, are from 71 countries, 71 countries, all continents, and uh, across 1,057 institutions among uh, the, uh, the applicants and uh, 7,329 are current students attending various uh, schools uh, around the world. And we have a big number from Tongji University, U UCL, Bart Bartley, RMIT, and many others. So Digital, Digital Futures um, is an education platform linking the universities and the institutions uh, around the world the initial has expanded uh, its partners and uh, maintained the long-term collaboration with a number of leading institutions, including ETH Zurich. Right now, uh, Philip Block have very close collaboration with my office and my, with Tongji. And we have a uh, very uh, good collaboration with IAAC, University of Stuttgart, and uh, Harvard, and GSD. MIT, SciArc, and uh, RMIT, AA, UCL, and so on. And uh, I think uh, that's the, all the university name you can see from this, um, uh, 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 this image. Uh, we have a lot. Uh, in the USC, uh, almost all the, uh, the good university have name here. And in, in China also, which is really a good performance. So um, yes, that is the, uh, our partners. Uh, Crossing all the continents. Now, uh, let my um, friends and also the close partner, uh, New Leach, uh, you can take over the session and introduce more uh, fabulous uh, studio works and our vision, visions, uh, which will happen this year. And welcome, uh, New. Uh, please keep on. Thank you, Philip. Thank you. Thank you. It's um, it's wonderful to see uh, the history of this um, uh, organization. Um, when you have a the name, you have the word futures in your uh, in your name. You don't often look back, but it is very very instructive to look back and, and look at how uh, we've grown. And I remember those early days when we had um, a handful of students. I would say. Um, I, I think to my mind, the, the, the most important step was the, the second year when we had not only Tom Main there, but also this incredible event where Yang Sung Ma and uh, Ma, uh, Ma, uh, uh, Ma Yang Sung uh, Ma and, and Ma Ching Yung were in the debate. It was uh, transfixing. Um, anyway, uh, I, I would like to say um, a few words about how this year's event um, grew out of last year's event. Um, while we, while I'll be talking, we are seeing in the background some of the work that was produced uh, last year in Digital Futures World. So the history of Digital Futures World um, was kind of interesting in its own way. We, I think, in February of last year, Philip, uh, Yuan, and I had a discussion when COVID had just arrived and uh, everything was very uncertain, and we we agreed that that we, it wouldn't be possible to actually have an event in the same way as as, as previous years in Shanghai, and therefore we should just abandon everything. Um, but then something strange happened. Um, uh, I found myself um, uh, having a review for my students um, online in April, and uh, uh, Philip Yuan and uh, Wan Yuhe um, were on the jury um, from China, and so was um, uh, Jill Retzen from London. Um, I was in, in, in Los Angeles, my students were in Miami, and we began to realize that you could use this platform to bridge the world. Um, 
and not only bridge the world, but also um, bridge the world with uh, a large number of followers. Uh, the following week, uh, Matthias Del Campo had his, his review in the University of Michigan, and there were about a thousand people following. Um, and we began to realize that actually, not, not, not only could we do something, but we could do something more significant than ever before. Um, so we went, we went global, we went online, and we launched this crazy event. Um, it, uh, uh, it, it was an event, we had no idea whether it would work or not, but it, it did work. Something very, very special came out of, uh, of, of last year's um, uh, workshop, Digital Futures World. As Philip mentioned, we had 12, over 12,000 applications, we had 80 workshops, 50 talks, and so on and so on. It was an astonishing event in its own right. But then out of that, something extraordinary happened. We began to realize that not only had we shown that you could teach online and you could spread material in a certain way, but you could use it as a way of actually uh, bringing about some kind of revolution in education. You could sort of use it to spread the word, to bring the very best ideas of, of, of architectural education to people throughout the world people even in more remote places, people with, in places that are economically disadvantaged, places that were that didn't have the same resources. We could bring the very best ideas um, and, and the very best tutors from the leading schools around the world, from the AA, from the Bartlett, from Harvard, from MIT, uh, and so on. We could bring them to, 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 uh, to, to everyone. And we realized that we had a, a potential role in democratizing education. It wasn't just a question of, uh, of, of, of providing those uh, ideas and of, of providing material, but actually calling into question and challenging mainstream architectural education. A comment that was made by Philippe Morel was that, that uh, digital futures had begun to serve a bit in the way that uh, Uber had served to, to uh, improve uh, the taxi services, that we had a potential role in, in upgrading architectural education worldwide. And that's something that we took very seriously. Um, as a result of the success of, of, of last year, um, something else happened. Uh, the, the, um, the theory uh, workshop that I, I taught with Sanford Quinta, Antoine Picon, and Marika Trotter was so successful that some of the students, some of the, 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 the people, the candidates watching uh, who were part of it on the workshop decided to keep a platform alive. Um, and they, they, we established a Discord channel where debates were taking place. And then we began to realize that the channel itself, the platform itself, could be kept alive the whole year. So it became a permanent platform, um, a permanent platform whereby every single week at this time, we're able to broadcast ideas all over the world. Um, and, the, and the reason why we had it this particular time is that this is the moment in the 24-hour clock when we can reach the most communities um, throughout the world. So as you know, that's what happened from, 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 all, from uh, July onwards. Uh, we've had these, these, these Saturday events. And those Saturday events have, um, in many ways, they've, uh, they've been incredibly popular. Um, we've had up to 7,000 followers each Saturday. We've uploaded the, um, the, the videos onto our, our YouTube channel, and they've been, they've been followed even more. Um, so... Uh, <clears throat> What is astonishing is is that we've we've that is that somehow something new has happened uh, on the, on the architectural scene that is in many ways revolutionising architectural education. We're bringing ideas all over the world um, for free, and that really was the background to what we were thinking about this particular year. Um, uh, how could we take these ideas even further? How could we um, build upon the success of last year? and extend ourselves, become even more ex exclusive. Um, while the Saturday sessions were, were being a, a, a very successful in, in creating a, a repository of, of architectural ideas, while they were kind of uh, bringing a lot of people together, how could we actually do something that would go extend ourselves beyond that? And of course, part of last year's, uh, of, of the whole uh, COVID-19 event, certainly in the States, was the whole sort of Black Lives Matter movement, the way in which social change was happening across the globe. Um, and we wanted to embrace that. We wanted to embrace that. We wanted to try and find a way in which we could be even more inclusive in the way that we could, we could look at things. So this year, we've, um, we've enlarged our team. We've brought on some extremely talented, extremely uh, enthusiastic and energetic um, members onto our team who are, are extending our, our remit, who are taking um, taking uh, our, uh, the message into other parts. Um, 
and I'll be introducing them um, very shortly. Um, but we're also in, so we're increasing the number of workshops. Uh, uh, currently, I think we're 104. I suspect there will be about 120 by the time uh, the event happens. Um, and and we're, 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 we're having not only uh, it, not only increasing the number of workshops, but also increasing the number of languages in which these workshops will be taking place. They'll be taking place in Russian, they'll take place in Spanish, they'll be taking place in Portuguese, in Korean, in Chinese, in Indonesian, in Farsi, uh, and so on. Um, and that, to my mind, is 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 an important part of, of democratizing education. Um, while English is, the, is, in many ways, the universal language, we shouldn't assume that everyone is able to speak English. And so we are trying to to open up and develop and expand this in a very inclusive way. Um, the other important event that, we, we, that we're introducing is the idea of a digital consortium. Um, what we mean by this is that, is that we can actually use this platform as a way, as a platform for, ed, for a, an educational platform that is actually in some ways is, is part of a curriculum. Um, so what we're doing then is we are uh, challenging the traditional notion that uh, there's always happened that there's a, a, a one professor in one classroom um, who is um, uh, talking to one group of students and we're exploring how we can use it that use the platform to open up in new ways so that everyone has access to that to the very best professors in the world uh, and that's the logic in a sense of what we mean by digital consortium it's not meant as an exclusive club in any way not at all it's meant as a as a as, a, it's, as an inclusive club but everyone throughout the world can be, become part of that um so that's what that's the, the the one of the, the important new initiatives that we've introduced in this year we have got some astonishingly good uh, speakers lined up for the digital consortium that i'm very very happy about um we start but there are two components to it one is a a, a theory component to it um and one is a, um, a performative design component. I've been curating the uh, um, the, uh, the theory component. And we start off with possibly the biggest rock star in the world of philosophy today, Slavoj Žižek. And it's a real, it's a delight to be able to have somebody so uh, incredibly smart, entertaining and, and, and uh, thoughtful uh, to kick off the digital consortium um, series. Um, we also have a um, uh, uh, other significant figures from the world of theory, uh, including um, uh, Sanford Quinta and Manuel de Landa, Erin Manning, um, and so on. Um, so we're hoping that this will be the kind of the stepping stone that will build up into um, a broader kind of framework whereby uh, doctoral students throughout the world will be able to be part of that. Um, and then we move on to the to the to the the, uh, the second component, the one that Philip has been curating, where we bring in people like Akin Menges and uh, um, and Meta Thompson and Philippe Bloch and Roland Snook, some of the some of these the, the the most talented people throughout the world. So everyone everyone throughout the world can have access to these ideas. Um, so that, to my mind, is 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 a, is a significant sort of step forward in terms of how we'll be operating. Um, but the main thing forward is, is, is main, the main idea is we want to kind of like we want to to overcome this idea that somehow that that education is a privilege of the wealthy, that educational ideas are, are for those only for those who can afford to study at places like the AA or, or Harvard GSD or, or or the Bartlett or wherever. Um, we want to make sure that we can we can bring those ideas to everyone, everyone throughout the world. I mean, using this platform as a way of way to make that happen. So this is a very exciting time for us. Um, it's uh, it's we, we we are busy. I would say charting the future in in this particular um, uh, in this particular movement. We're trying to find ways in which we can rethink what architecture itself can be um, from from uh, from uh, from the very beginning. We started off last year when we realized that that the digital future was already here. That all of a sudden we were we were um, we were buying our groceries online. We were we were paying things contactless payment. We were communicating with Zoom. And we're not looking back and being and just being satisfied with that. We want to push things further. We want to bring things, and not just from a kind of technological point of view, but also from a social point of view. Um, as Philip mentioned, we're also interested in kind of addressing debates about climate change, about sea level rise, about uh, other questions, the exploitation of the Amazon, and so on, um, and gender questions. We have a session on on female designers from the Arab world. We want to make this as as much a part of a kind of social uh, revolution as it is a kind of technological revolution. But it is a revolution in many ways, and we want to try and um, open up architecture um, to everyone else throughout the world. Uh, architectural education, in our view, uh, should not be a privilege. Of, uh, should not be a, a privilege, but a human right. So, um, 
I want to uh, now pass on to Chao to 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 uh, uh, Chao Yan, um, who will take you through um, some of the uh, the application process. Um, we are uh, we have just launched our website. It's still um, been developed in some ways, um, and uh, we, over the next few days, it'll become fully operational. Um, but this is really, I think, um, a chance for you to get some sense of of how you might be applying for these workshops. Um, we are delighted by the, the lineup that we, we have this year. Some really astonishing figures. You can you can follow Zaha Hadid Architects and the workshop they're doing. Um, you can follow um, a number of hybrid workshops which have been uh, conducted online, but to be fabricated, the, the outcomes be fabricated in China and Egypt and elsewhere. And you can follow some astonishing discussions that are going to happen. Um, I'm going to be part of a discussion with Sanford Quinter, who was, I think, the breakout star of last year the leading and most entertaining and, and uh, stimulating uh, intellectual figure, to my mind, in, in architectural culture worldwide. We'll be hosting a kind of a, a session based on that. There'll be a whole number of, uh, of, of, of uh, workshops looking at AI and all the latest um, new developments. Um, and I I'm very proud of, of, of what we're putting together. So I hope that as many as possible will be able to uh, partake of this um, and partake of this in different languages. Um, so I'd like to um, hand over to, to Chao Yan, who has been working flat out over the last few days trying to sort out the workshop. Um, Chao Yan, I should say, is maybe a, a, a sign, I think, of the, uh, the future of, of Chinese architectural education. He was um, one of my PhD students at Tongji, uh, one of the first kind of leading theorists in, in, in China, who I think has, has got a great future ahead of him. So welcome, welcome, Chao. Uh, okay, thank you, Neil. Uh, okay, let me share my screen. Uh, okay, hello. Um, my name is Chao Yan, and I'm from China. Uh, I'm currently a postdoctor at Tongji University, where I conduct research, uh, mainly focusing on the history of automation construction and also digital design theory. Uh, and I have also been working with Philip Yuan and Neil Leach and other team members um, in the organization of digital futures since 2014. Uh, so it's really a been a pleasure to meet you all online. Um, and following what Philip and Neil presented about the mission and the vision of digital futures, I'm going to give some details of this year's events, uh, the schedule and the application process. Um, so for, for this summer, we have planned several key events where, which will be happening over almost one month uh, from June the 12th to July the 10th. Uh, so firstly, on the left part of this timeline, you will see that from June the 12th to 24th, uh, we will have our newly invented digital consortium, uh, which is a free doctor platform uh, built upon the international PhD program of Tongji University. Um, and for the consortium in this summer, uh, we will have two lecture series. Uh, one is about architecture and philosophy uh, curated by Neil, and another is on performative design hosted by Philip. And I will also be there to assist them to coordinate the lectures. So the plan for, for the consortium is on, on each day, we will have one lecture uh, given by a leading figure of the field and then following by the discussions with the enrolled PhD students from all around the world. Um, and as Neil has said, the, the speakers include the Stavor Dizak, uh, Sanvo Quinter, Manuel Delanda, uh, Max Xie, Philip Block, uh, Meta Thompson, Aki Mengus, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and we will announce the application for the consortium very soon. And then moving forward, uh, our main Digital Futures event will be hosted from June the 26th to July the 3rd. Um, within this time, there will be over 100 workshops addressing all aspects of the digital. Uh, students can either participate online or attend a few hybrid workshops taking place in Shanghai and Egypt. Um, and many of the leading schools of architecture will be running workshops this year, like UCL, AA, uh, ETH Zurich, uh, ICD. Uh, so there will be an amazing lineup of workshops for you this year. Uh, meanwhile, along with these workshops, uh, on June the 26th, 
uh, we will have the third Digital Futures Conference on Computational Design and Robotic Fabrications. Uh, and then on the following days after the 6th, 26th, uh, we will also have a talk series particularly addressing the theme of this year, inclusive futures. So you can also looking forward to those events too. Um, and, and, and also please keep in mind with these three important days, uh, June the 26th for our opening ceremony, uh, July the 3rd for the uh, closing ceremony and the award presentations, and finally July the 10th for the opening of our uh, exhibition. Um, we will gradually publish the, the detailed information on our website and uh, as well as other social medias. So please follow us on these coming events. Uh, okay, regarding the to the to the pre-event schedule, uh, I guess for you the most important information is how to apply workshops. Um, so for the workshop application in this year, we will launch uh, our new website at the domain of digitalfutures.world. Um, the new website is embedded with the uh, application system through which the participants can register with a permanent account. And with this account signed in, uh, you may apply workshops, uh, you may check your application status, uh, you may reaching out to your team members uh, and receiving your certificates. So the, uh, so the idea here is to build a community among all the participants and instructors through our website platform. Uh, for the application process itself, uh, after register and send in on our website, <clears throat> you may check workshop information on our workshop page and make your selection. Uh, each student can apply three workshops in parallel uh, and later getting three results from the instructors. Uh, the results will be either being accepted or in the waiting list. Uh, and you have to make a decision to accept one result from the three. Um, if you confirm the acceptance result from one instructor, then you may just uh, start preparing and getting ready for the workshop. But if you really want to stay in the waiting list of a workshop, you need to wait for the second round review from the instructor and the result of which could be either accepted or rejected in the end. Uh, regarding to the schedule of the application, um, so the application is from uh, May the 18th to 28th. During the time, uh, we will gradually upload and publish workshop information on our webpage. Uh, so you may you so you may not really want to make all three of your selections too early since there will be more workshops coming. Um, after the application deadline, uh, the instructors will start to review and you will receive the result around June the 4th. First. Um, then, as I said earlier, you will need to make a decision about the three results, only choosing one of them. And after, and, and this will affect your further uh, schedule, whether you need to wait for the waiting list to reveal result coming around uh, during the 10th, or you could just getting ready for the first event, digital consortium, starting at June the 12th. Um, so this is the overview of the whole summer events from my end, and we will be open for any questions. Thank you. Perhaps I could now um, invite Virginia to um, uh, to offer us an overview of some of the, the data about the workshops in the past and an overview of the regions for, um, uh, for this year. Virginia, welcome. I'm still muted, so all right, thank you, I'm muted. Hello, welcome. Um, I just want to announce that we have over 100 workshops this year. So we are very excited to have this variety and diversity of workshops that is going to be available for all of the students. Um, and you have already seen this map from Philip Yuan, but just to re-highlight all the different areas because we are really making an effort to be global and be inclusive by reaching out to some of the different universities and different instructors across the world that come from unique cultures and backgrounds and bringing them all together on this platform to really teach together um, and share their knowledge and experience. 
Um, so some of the main workshop topics that we have um, are highlighted here in this word cloud with um, computational design, advanced and introductory levels, um, AI, fabrication, design fictions, architecture, um, space architecture and structural design. These are all of the main themes that we will be categorizing the workshops under this year. And you can see here um, right now, based on the workshops that we have lined up, the number of each of those that will be available for you to sign up for. So obviously computational design and artificial intelligence are our largest categories um, as they are really growing um, in importance in the architectural industry and educational system and also very important to digital futures. We also are offering workshops in so many more languages this year than in the past. Um, most of our workshops will be offered in English to allow for that diversity um, as English tends to be one of the most common languages shared among um, many second language speakers. And then of course there will be several in Chinese as um, Digital Futures is originally based at Tongji University, so we have a strong support there with Chinese workshops, but our Spanish workshops and Portuguese workshops are growing, as well as we will have Arabic, Farsi, a workshop in Russian, and a workshop in Korean. Um, and they, there might be more as well, but I just want to note that if you are not a confident English speaker, we are here for you, and we will make the best to make this a great learning opportunity for you as well. Last year, when we first did our global um, events, we found that more students were interested in auditing. And this was something that we were doing this for the first time and we were learning with you as our students of what we could provide for you. And so this year we are encouraging so many more workshops to be live streaming. So each workshop will be sharing their streaming links with us, either their YouTube, Billy or Facebook streaming links. And we will have those all listed on our website so that you may be able to browse the workshop. So if you don't get a chance to register for a workshop in advance on the deadline that uh, my assistant Chow had just mentioned and or maybe you are too busy and don't feel you can commit 100% to be a participating student in the Zoom meeting or you just want to see what's going on in workshops that you know you're you really don't have the skills for yet but you really just want to learn and, and watch this option is going to be available and we are really promoting um, this opportunity to browse around these different live streamings um, so they'll all be linked on our website um, during the festival in July and June. And finally, um, assessment from last year's keywords. So we asked um, all the instructors when they submitted their workshops to submit three keywords. And this is another word cloud of just what were those keywords to all of our instructors. And you see here, simulation, design, artificial intelligence, neural networks, computational design, agent-based deep learning, structural agency fabrication. So these are really the trends that we are seeing from our instructors. And we are excited to share workshops that go on these themes all around the world. And I will leave it to each of the uh, regional managers to talk more in depth about what themes and what uh, ideas are going on within their own regions, because these are the overall trends that we have now. Thank, thank, thank you, Virginia. Um, that was that was that was really informative. Um, I, maybe I should say I counted twelve different languages, I, and I, I don't know which ones have been missing out there. We certainly have some in Bangladesh, Bangladeshi, and also Indonesian this year, which I think is really an important step in in branching out. We we like to think that English has become the universal language. Uh, Arabic has given us our numerals, and Zoom has given us our platform. But we want to be, embrace as many as possible um, in uh, in the future. So, so if, um, thank thank you, Virginia. That was yes, that exactly. Was that was great so um let me just kind of just briefly to say just introduce kind of the, our, our one by one our um our regional managers who have got a message from their region and we'll talk about have an overview of um uh 
of, of what, what's on offer in their region. So I want to start by going back to Chow. Um, Chow has been responsible for, has been a longstanding member, of course, of, of the Digital Futures. Um, and he's, uh, in addition to looking after the website and all those other things, is, is in charge of, of China. So um, welcome, Chow. Okay, thank you, Neil. Um, well, I, I would say China has always been an important place for Digital Futures. Uh, not only because it was initiated here, but also we have been like organizing uh, in-person events here for almost 10 years um, before going online last year due to the COVID. Um, but, but since the pandemic is getting better in many places around the world, uh, especially in China, uh, so for this year, we are planning to host a series of hybrid workshops uh, on one hand to test out a new model of workshop. Uh, which could integrate remote teaching and learning process uh, with local fabrication uh, by taking the, the advantage uh, of those most advanced digital tools like AR, VR, uh, remote control platform of robots, uh, etc. Uh, on the other hand, we will also want to use this kind of model uh, as an opportunity to rethinking and further encourage global collaborations uh, within the post-pandemic world. Uh, so by now we have got many supports from our long-term collaborators and friends uh, on this adventure. Um, so there will be joint workshops among the world leading schools and institutions like SAD Stuttgart, uh, ETH Zurich, SIAC, Bollinger, uh, Tongji Southeast. Uh, they will be paired and working closely together to explore the new way of teaching uh, digital fabrication. And they will also construct a series of large scale installations for our exhibition uh, starting at uh, July the 10th. Um, and in parallel to this return to materiality, uh, we also want to embrace the, technology, the technologies of the virtue, uh, which have got significant development during the COVID. Uh, so if you are still having difficulties in traveling, you may also check our workshops by the schools, institutions, individuals who have those most cutting edge techniques. Uh, for example, we have workshops by uh, University of Hawaii, uh, by X school, by Zheng Hao on AI design. Um, we also have workshops by Metro Data Technology, by Kim Yao uh, on big data and simulation. Uh, we also have Scalo from Harbin Institute of Technology, Shenzhen, uh, to teach VR technology. We have Saturo on advanced computational design. Um, I believe you will get unprecedented uh, learning experience with these workshops as well. Um, so this is my report on Asia Pacific workshops. And my colleagues, Nick and Ripo, will give you more information for this time zone. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thanks, Chow. Um, uh, I'd like to invite um, Nick Bao. Um, Nick has also been a, a long-term member of, of, of the community. He's been teaching workshops in the past. I should say that Nick is, um, has just been appointed a, a lecturer, which means assistant professor at RMIT, the U leading university in Australia. Um, so um, welcome, Nick. Um, thank you, Neil. Um, so hi, uh, my name is Nick Bao. I'm in Australia. I'm a, a lecturer at School of Architecture and Urban Design at MIT. So recently I'm coordinating the digital future workshops in Australia and some Asian regions. Um, digital future is an excellent platform for people to expose themselves to uh, various possibilities in design, engineering, and technology. So with the digital future um, participates um, with uh, various age groups, educational background, um, professions will have more opportunities to explore the uh, different experts with uh, field of uh, digital design, computational design, urban design, bio design, um, AR, VR, structure design, robotic fabrication, artificial intelligence, and uh, space architecture. So this year, Digital Future will collaborate with more um, well-known international universities and architecture practice to deliver uh, online and uh, um, physical workshops. Um, to demonstrate the values of digital design and advanced fabrication in architecture, we have uh, senior um, instructors and more young instructors collaborating with their colleagues from different countries to share their research and present their um, architecture practice. So this year in Australia and some Asian regions, 
we have invited uh, several well-known professors, uh, including um, Emanui Kao from um, SUTD, uh, Christoph um, Corolla from uh, Hong Kong University, Mark Berry from Swanburne University, Roland Snooks, Mike Shi and myself from MIT University to teach online workshops. Um, also, Roland Snooks, Mike Shi and I will also collaborate with uh, CCSTC and Tongji University to teach a hybrid uh, physical workshop and uh, um, build up several robotic fabricated installation in Tongji campus in Shanghai. So in summary, at the Digital Futures, we aim to encourage more ideas and the education for free. And this event was um, host every year. So we encourage more Australian and in New Zealand universities and architecture schools can in involve in this um, event in the future. Thank you. Can I just ask you to say something in Chinese? <laughs> just a, a few brief words in Chinese for our Chinese community. Yeah, although, um, oh, okay, so I just speak Chinese? Yes, just a little few words. Okay, so, uh, 欢迎在澳大利亚的, um, 更多的学生来参加, uh, digital future the Hordo. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay. You're welcome. Okay, um, so uh, next I'd like to move on to, to Ripple. Ripple is, um, uh, is, is a new member of the team, and it's great to have it to, to have him. Uh, he is a graduate of the AADRL, and uh, he's been looking, going to be looking after um, India and Bangladesh. Ripple, welcome. Thank you, Neil, for the introduction. Um, hello, my name is Ripple. I'm from India. I'm an architect and an entrepreneur with my organization, TH2.0, or Townhouse 2.0. I'm a researcher at Balwan State School of Architecture and MIMS University, Mumbai, and a 2018 graduate from Architectural Association, AADRL. I see digital futures as a great opportunity for people, particularly in India, to explore uh, themselves to various possibilities in design and technology. Um, with digital futures, uh, participants, irrespective of any uh, age group, background, professions, could dive into uh, different topics, uh, field such, uh, fields such as uh, computation, gaming, AR, VR, structural designing, environmental designing, um, etc. Participants can learn uh, from the best in the field of fabrication, uh, data visualization, urban design. Um, this year, particularly for India, we aim at demonstrating the value of collaboration in design and technology. Um, collaboration of people, thoughts, and skills. Um, to demonstrate these values in architecture, we have some young instructors collaborating with their colleagues and uh, teammates from various countries to share their research and reveal some present and future architectural practices. Um, talking more about our instructors and their objectives, some of our instructor, uh, instructors hopes uh, hope to demonstrate their knowledge about the role of AI and machine learning in engineering and architecture, uh, suggesting the role of technologists and computational geeks in the field of design and architecture. Um, some of our inter uh, instructors are also interested in building a solid foundation of computational design and digital fabrication. Um, India, Indian participants uh, should be interested in learning the significance of emergent technologies such as 3D printing and robotics in an Indian context. Um, in summary, at Digital Futures, we aim to encourage ideas and education for free. And uh, this event, which is hosted every year, should uh, not just be an educational event, but uh, should be celebrated as uh, as should be considered as a celebration of design, collaboration, and emergence to inspire and innovate for the future. Thank you. Ripple, can I invite you to say something in, uh, in Hindi? <laughs> okay, I'm just going to greet first everyone. Namaste. Um, um, हम एक कम्युनिटी है जो आर्किटेक्चर एजुकेशन को बदलना चाहते हैं और हम चाहते हैं कि ज़्यादा से ज़्यादा लोग हमें इस इस सफर में हमारा हमारे साथ रहे और हम हम चाहते हैं कि हम सब आगे आगे बढ़ते रहें शुक्रिया
<laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks. Okay, I'd like to move on to Aya. Um, Aya Riad is, uh, like Ripple, is a graduate of the AADRL. Uh, she is originally from Egypt and now based in Dubai. Uh, welcome, Aya. Thank you so much, Neil. Uh, I would like to start by welcoming everyone in Arabic. Marhaban uh, bikum for Inclusive Futures. نحن منظمة تريد إعادة تشكيل التعليم المعماري من خلال تقديم أفضل الأفكار المعمارية مجانا للمهندسين المعماريين والطلاب في جميع أنحاء العالم. Hi everyone, my name is Aya. Uh, as Inclusive Futures Middle East Regional Manager, I would like to briefly introduce myself. Uh, I'm an Egyptian architect and design researcher based in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, as Neil mentioned, I'm an AADRL graduate and I'm currently the co-founder of uh, Shift Space Design and Research, which is an experimental design studio based here in Dubai. I also teach advanced computational design at the American University in Cairo. Uh, my research interests include self-assembling autonomous systems, multi-agent communication, and soft robotics within the realm of design and architecture. I see Inclusive Futures as a mobilizer for democratizing education and basically removing barriers on a global scale. It brings together a worldwide community of individuals who are passionate to contribute to the future of architecture, design, and research. I see it as an open forum for exchanging knowledge and ideas about the latest computational design tools, innovative fabrication techniques, and architectural theories. I personally admire its dedication to diversity and bringing in new voices and opinions about what our future could look like. This summer with Inclusive Futures, we will be having plenty of exciting workshops from leading instructors in the Middle East region that cover topics like the future of dwelling, interactive design, evolutionary algorithms, robotic fabrication, and artificial intelligence. Some of these workshops will be hands-on dealing with how the architecture of the near future will need to be versatile, adaptable, to provide humanity with spaces that address social and sustainable issues towards creating a better quality of life for communities in our region and around the globe. These workshops will be given in different languages, as many of my colleagues mentioned, uh, but also there will be languages from our region, including Arabic and Farsi, uh, as well as a lot of these workshops will be uh, given as an introductory level workshop, so it will be accessible to everyone. Um, I would just like to conclude that we have a huge diversity of workshops this year, and a lot of them are structured and scheduled to suit timings in the Middle East region. So I'm looking forward to seeing more participants from the Middle East. Thank you. Thank you, Aya. That was that was terrific. Um, I'd like to uh, pass on to Ahmed. Ahmed has, has, has actually been a long-term member of, of um, Digital Futures as a student on the workshops in, in, in years gone by, but also now as a kind of a central figure within the organization. And one thing I should say that Ahmed is really committed to is um, the notion of free education. He has been given been giving in Egypt, he's been given free uh, to, uh, uh, workshops uh, all over, and that's a central part of what we're about, about free, about bringing everything for free, including conferences. Otherwise, in many places, you, you have to pay a fortune to enter a conference, but the Digital Futures one is, is totally free. So anyway, welcome, Ahmed. Thanks, Chair. <laughs> I'd like to start by greeting for everyone. Tahiyyati tayyiba min al-Qahira li um, Digital Futures بتحاول إن هي تعمل حاجة كويسة لكل الناس. أنا هتكلم بالعامية المصرية طبعاً لأن أنا مصري. Um, واللطيف إن أنت ممكن تحضر ورشة مع مكتب زا حديد مثلاً مع باتريك في مخر ببلاش أو إنك تحضر ديسكشن مع يان سونج ما المؤسس بتاع ماد أركتكت برضو ببلاش من غير ما تدفع حاجة. I believe in what Digital Futures is doing. Um, they are offering second opportunity for financially challenged people around the world. Especially these days, where crises and refugees are everywhere. Also, what is most important of what we do is to build bridges between different cultures, which will lead to world peace. Um, as I believe, um, as being digital futures inclusive, I am Ahmed. I'm an Egyptian uh, architectural engineer, graduated from Cairo University 2012. Um, and I'm a PhD candidate nowadays at the same university. Through my master's, I designed four plugins in Grasshopper for data extraction for fabrication. Um, and I'm working as a lecture assistant in the American University in Cairo, 
and as a senior architect at engineering consultants group designed a lot of um, formal um, and national uh, buildings here in Egypt as Cairo Grand Opera House in New Capital and a lot of other uh, buildings. Um, as Africa Regional Manager, I have um, a good news for everyone. Um, uh, and actually, it will be available for everyone around the world who can be in our time zone, uh, East Africa. Um, we have a lot of workshops as space architecture will be by an award-winning architect and um, a Rhino workshop by a McNeil staff and other BIM workshop uh, by a well-known institution, BIM Arabia. Um, لا يحصل السنة دي مهم جدا اوعى تفوت محاضرة او ورشة انا رأيي الشخص ان هي فرصة مهمة جدا وفرصة لطيفة ان انت تعمل مستقبل افضل يعني وتشوف اللي بيحصل في العالم حواليك واي حد عنده اي اسئلة يقدر يبعت لي انا تحت امره وانا هبعت لكم كل الكونكشنز بتاعتي في الكومنتات ليتر اون على الواتساب وفيسبوك ويوتيوب. This year we have a very important hybrid workshop from the American University in Cairo where a 3D metal printing will be applied. Thanks for their precious efforts and thanks to my professor Sharif Murad for his amazing efforts since I joined his team in 2014. And thanks for Professor Samir Sayari, an international award-winning architect in the space architecture field. And he involved in a lot of projects and workshops with NASA. Um, he will be doing a workshop with us. وكذلك العديد من الورش الرائعة اللي هيقدمها كتير من زمايلي زي هشام من إياك راجع عيسى من مكنيل أسوسيت هكون بالعربي وكتير من الزملاء أنا طبعا هعمل ورشة في الراينو والجراس سوبر والفابريكيشن كالعادة وأنا مهتم بالناس اللي ما بتعرفش أصلا تشتغل لأن أنا كعادتي بحب أبدأ بالناس اللي هي من الصفر اللي ما يعرفش خالص إن شاء الله هنعلمه إزاي يتعلم الأهم من ده أنت لازم تؤمن بإمكانياتك وقدراتك وان اي حاجه ممكن تتعلم. ولو اكتبت حاجه انا والتيم بتاعي هنكون موجودين ان شاء الله ان احنا ندعمك ولو حابب تكون معانا تنهار. وزي ما دكتور نيل ليتش قال في بدايه كلامه ان العرب ابتكروا الارقام وانا اتمنى تقدروا تعيدوا بناء العالم. Thanks for everyone. Thank you, Ahmed. It, it's, I can't tell you how wonderful it is to hear these different languages. Uh, it's, it really brings it home, not as the backdrop of the, the, the pyramids there in Egypt, but also to hear, to hear Arabic spoken. Um, next, we move on to Maria Kutsova. Maria is a, is a new member, but very welcome member to our team. Um, she is uh, from Russia and she's, been, um, she's currently doing a PhD with Claudio Pasquero, who's been very supportive of our enterprise at the University of Innsbruck. Um, and uh, um, Maria has been looking after Russia. Maria, welcome. Привет. Thank you very much, Neil. Привет. Hello, my name is Maria, and I'm from St. Petersburg in Russia. Добрый день всем русскоговорящим слушателям. Меня зовут Мария. Я рада представить сегодня Inclusive Futures в России. Inclusive Futures – это фантастическая инициатива, которая объединяет команду самых талантливых архитекторов, художников, дизайнеров и мыслителей, чтобы формировать наше сегодняшнее, настоящее и наше завтра. И я очень рада, что в этом году у нас появилась возможность представить Inclusive Futures в России. I, uh, и сейчас я переключусь обратно на, на, на английский. I am a research associate and doctoral candidate at the University of Innsbruck Synthetic Landscape Lab, but I am very uh, connected to my home country, to Russia, and I'm running several research initiatives and uh, academic as well and uh, artistic initiatives in Russia as Digitasen.net. It's an artistic community distributed around the whole Russia um, and art and science, technological art, program uh, in St. Petersburg in the ITMO University. And Inclusive Futures is a really fantastic initiative which brings together a team of the most talented architects, artists, designers and thinkers in order to shape our today and our tomorrow. Inclusive Futures spread cutting edge education, advanced design techniques and changing world ideas around the globe in order to make knowledge accessible and free. I'm really honored to be in a part of the organizational team this year and introduce Inclusive Futures in Russia. In the early decades of the 20th century, you know, Russian artists and architects generated some really exclusive works. But now in the early decades of the 21st century, we see the emergence of the new talents who are driving the projects in Russia. And I'm happy that some of them will be introducing uh, the workshops in the Inclusive Futures this year. 
I'm glad to introduce the team and the ideas that we are bringing from Russia and to Russia this year. Some of our instructors will question the role of AI and machine learning in architecture as Eduard Hyman and Katja Larina are planning incredible workshop and they're planning to experiment with, a with AI based mapping techniques, allowing us to venture beyond the traditional snapshot perception of the territories we live in. The topic of biodesign will be opened up in another workshop run by Katja Briskina and Natalie Nemkova uh, from Intelligent Morphology Studio. Uh, they will run a workshop which will explore how to co-design with nature and learn from physical experiments with mycelium and translate it to the computational logic and design applications. At Moore University, art and science team will run several biological and digital experiments in order to study the hybrid matter which is formed at the intersection of biological and digital. Digital, digital I cannot pronounce it in English. Digital and Net team in their workshop will study the post-Soviet territories, exploring the identity of the landscapes on the planetary scale, using virtual reality as a method for interaction for interacting with the designed landscape. Uh, also, virtual reality and hybrid spaces uh, will be uh, highly investigated uh, by another workshop by Ephemera One Studio run by Daria Smachtina. And we have amazing SA Lab team from St. Petersburg who will be running two workshops, one in English, another one in Russian, and will be uh, developing a web application for designing transform transformable modular spaces in and structures as well as giving through this web application uh, the way for us to interact with the structures. So uh, maybe I didn't cover actually them all, but I don't want to take it long. Uh, so all this series of the workshops uh, will aim to encourage new ideas and that every uh, little part of the world and every little part of, the, of Russia and bring and spread the knowledge, thoughts and creativity. Thank you very much. Spasibo, spasibo. That was, I, I have to say that from a personal perspective, I was taught uh, Russian constructivism by Catherine Cook in, in, in Cambridge in England. And of course, at that time, Rem Kolas and Zaha Hadid were looking at the Russian constructivists too. And uh, I actually was privileged enough to teach uh, Berta Lubekin's um, grandson. Berta Lubekin came to the UK from Russia and was our leading modernist architect. Um, so I'd like to thank you, thank you, Maria. Spasibo. Let's. I'd like to move on to Antonio. Antonio is, uh, I would say, Antonio Bonacci is um, uh, was is part, in part responsible for the way in which um, uh, digital futures developed. He was on the uh, part of the workshop last year with with Sanford and, and Marie Cotrotter and Antoine, and uh, he and a few others launched a Discord channel to go and keep the debate alive, and that was the trigger that really kept the thing going and kept uh, and, and, and instigated the idea of actually having digital futures as a weekly platform to disseminate information. So uh, welcome, Antonio. Thanks, Neil. Uh, I'm going to start in Italian then. Benvenuti a Inclusive Futures. Il nostro obiettivo è quello di rivoluzionare l'educazione in architettura, diffondendo le idee più rilevanti nel campo gratuitamente ad architetti e studenti in ogni parte del mondo. Hi. My name is uh, Antonio Bernacchi, and I come from Italy for 10 years in Southeast Asia, uh, specifically in Singapore and Bangkok. I've recently moved to Denmark, where I am assistant teaching professor at the um, architecture school in Aarhus. Um, I recently joined Digital Futures, and uh, I think it's a great community with a very valuable mission of spreading ideas and you know, promoting a very engaging debate uh, in, in all the digital uh, design fields, but not only. Um, my research interests actually include primarily design fiction and if you want to say the construction of realities as a critical instrument where uh, tools like detailed design modeling, virtual and augmented realities play a crucial role. And these are actually some of the areas of interest of digital futures world that are going to be dealt with in several of the workshops this year, some of which are from the European region. Uh, if uh, you want to say the, the use of real-time render engines, online collaborative platforms, uh, to host virtual spaces and models 
will uh, progressively help blur the boundaries between design and other growing fields like, uh, like gaming, for example. Uh, and the techniques of design fictions also will expand, including non-human species and different possible futures into the equation. In Europe, various, various workshops are gonna deal with these topics and also um, several workshops are going to deal with coding and advanced methods of computational design, covering different languages, different methodologies, different architectural cultures all around the continent. Moreover, robotic fabrication will also be uh, present and an important component, including a remote uh, operation as an interesting way to learn about manufacturing and manufacturing machinery, but uh, in an online context where instructors and, and, and participants are spread in different uh, places. Europe will also feature some peculiar experimental fields like biodesign or even space architecture uh, that are topics that have been uh, discussed multiple times in digital future plat platforms this year and also in the events that we host on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and uh, the, in, the, in this way, they, they will be able uh, to be engaged and explored by the participants of Inclusive Future this year. Thanks, everyone. Arrivederci. Grazie, grazie mille. Um, so uh, let's move on to, to uh, it's wonderful to hear Italian, it's, it's a beautiful language. Um, well, let's move on to, to Marina, Marina Rodriguez das Neves, uh, who is in La Plata, Argentina. Um, she's actually a colleague of mine, FIU as well. Um, and uh, Marina um, is in charge of, uh, um, of, of South America. Um, and we have some workshops in, in, in Spanish and Portuguese um, there. So welcome, uh, Marina. Thanks, Neil. Uh, thanks for all the for all the team. I will switch to uh, Spanish now. So, uh, hola, bienvenidos a Inclusive Futures. Queremos revolucionar la educación brindando las mejores ideas arquitectónicas de forma gratuita a arquitectos y estudiantes de todo el mundo. So, as I said, uh, my name is Marina. I'm from La Plata, Argentina. I'm in La Plata right now. I'm a DDS candidate from FIU. I'm working on a theoretical thesis about AI and architecture. I earned my master's degree in history and culture of the architecture and the city from Torquato di Tella University. And I'm an undergrad degree uh, architecture from the National University of La Plata, Buenos Aires, Argentina. I have taught courses in architectural design, theory and history of architecture in La Plata and the master project course with Neil Leach in FIU. I have also been a member of Digital Futures since 2020. My interests have focused on architectural design, critical theory, and philosophy. And I believe that Digital Futures offers to everyone who wants to take part the opportunity to think new questions. It is an opportunity from young people from the architectural field of having a voice that can be listened, as well as the possibility of hearing new voices. It is a space where people all over the world can share knowledge in a spirit of solidarity. It is about connectness, participation, and inclusivity. In this time zone, where I've been working, I will present specifically the territory of South America. I must say I'm only presenting, I'm not representing, or maybe why not I'm saying. And I'm saying that South America is an immense territory that can never be totally represented. South America is highly diverse and so are its schools. But anyway, here we are. In South America, we will cover almost all the topics of digital futures in several languages. In these workshops, you will see natural intelligence, artificial intelligence, and of course, material intelligence. And all of them are, will connect, are connected by architectural intelligence in a swarm. This swarm cannot reduce it to a specific border. It is a territory itself. So there are workshops in the... Uh, there are workshops in which the past of architecture is material of speculation, fictions from other planets, imaginaries from machines, immersive memories, genealogies, and philosophy of design. Some workshops will address questions about how emergent technologies can be a way to redefine human and non-human interactions from social housing spaces to planetary villages. From biomimetics, cyber semiotics, and environmental challenges to structural and spatial studies. 
from the parameter to the big data. Despite the complexity and the diversity of these topics, there, there is a temporal dimension in all of them, the attempt of thinking about the process behind things. So digital future, this lovely body without organs, it is a community of friends who wants to learn from each other without the hierarchies, all together from a better common future. So thank you very much. Gracias. Um, do you speak any Portuguese at, you, at all? Benvindo. <laughs> For welcome is Benvindo. So uh, I, I can say that. Uh, yes, my, my part of my family is from Portugal, so I can just speak a few words, but I, I can. Yeah, but I don't want to, to, to do it. So I, I will receive a lot of critics from Brazil. No, you mispronounce something. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well, just to say that Brazil is, of course, something very important to us, and we have a number of workshops in, in Portuguese, which I think is uh, also very wonderful. So uh, next, I'll move on to Virginia, back to Virginia, who's uh, in charge of East Coast America. Virginia, welcome. Hello. Um, I'm just going to say a few words in my native language, English. Inclusive Futures is here to revolutionize architectural education by bringing the best educational ideas and architectural ideas to the, to the world for free, to architects and students throughout the world. I'm Virginia Melnick and I live in Clemson, South Carolina, which is in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains, which you see behind me here in my background. Uh, I am also a PhD student at the Digital Futures International PhD program at Tongji University, where Philip Yuan is my advisor. My research is in computational design, knitted textiles, and temporary deployable structures. In addition, I am a regional manager of the Eastern United States and Canada. So this summer, what we are looking forward to for workshops within this region is being more inclusive by offering opportunities for instructors from some of the top universities, such as Harvard, MIT, UPenn, Michigan, Syracuse, and so many more that I cannot name them all here, but they will have that opportunity to teach to people all over the world who may have not been able to travel to the States before. Uh, so really getting to spread knowledge and share ideas. Uh, these workshops will be led by some amazing instructors such as Matias de Campo, Daniel Bolajan, Philip Beasley, and my colleague here at Clemson, Joseph Choma. Uh, and of course, there's, there's many more that I cannot name, but they're all gonna be really amazing. The themes of these workshops will address several things, but we are again seeing artificial intelligence as one of the leading themes within the workshops here in the Eastern United States, as well as computational design, theory, and structural design. Uh, the other thing that's really great about these workshops is because they're gonna be online and inclusivity is such an important topic in the States right now. Uh, we're really seeing the virtual classroom as a way to learn together and learn from one another without any boundaries, with no discrimination and the opportunity to just come together for the objectives of learning and the greater good of creating a more inclusive future. Thank you. Thank you, um, Virginia. Um, it's, that's, it's, well, it's, I should say that Virginia, of course, is, her answer is, I think, for Eastern Europe. I mean, I'm, I'm, an Ameri I'm, in, I'm a British person in America. My ancestors were also from Ireland and things. So I think we're all kind of hybrid creatures. We're all in many ways, um, uh, we've all kind of uh, transcended these boundaries. Um, so I'd like to, to move on to Gustavo. Um, and uh, I don't know if, Gustavo, you could say anything in Spanish, whether <laughs> you're embarrassed by your Spanish, but uh, uh, Gustavo is, is, has been, a, uh, along with Virginia, has been a real pillar behind um, Digital Futures this year. Uh, there's the, taking up a huge amount of the work. So, Gustavo, I just want to say that you're, you, and to also Virginia, your, your contributions are really appreciated. So, uh, thank you and, and, and welcome, Gustavo. Uh, well, welcome, everyone, and thank you. So, I, ha I have something prepared. So uh, welcome, uh, bienvenidos a futuros inclusivos, uh, inclusive futures. Queremos revolucionar la educación arquitectónica llevando las mejores ideas. 
for free to architects and students throughout the world, todo el mundo. So hello, my name is Gustavo Rincon. I'm educated as an architect from the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA, at the Architecture and Urban Design, AUD, and a recent PhD in the Media Arts and Technology, MAT, from uh, the University of California, Santa Barbara, UCSB. I was born in the United States, uh, living in both coasts, east and west, and in Bogota, Colombia. My interests, uh, my dissertation uh, title, Shaping Spaces as Information, a Conceptual Framework for a New Media Architectures, launched in, uh, hopes to launch a new field of inquiry, integrating the arts, architecture, and the sciences. Currently, I'm an active research member for the Allosphere Research Group at UCSB, acting as an associate curator of design, media, arts, and science, and outreach. Currently, I'm continuing my research with Dr. Kuchara Marin in two areas, uh, instrument design with AR, VR, and XR spaces based on the Allosphere facility model and the fabrication of quantum objects based on her, uh, the last half decade of her work. Some of, the, uh, some of the highlights of my region are AI and speculative futures, AR, VR games, embodiment, advanced computational design methods, data visualization, parametric design and fabrication, hopefully some CNC uh, milling methods using a three um, axis mill, uh, space, space architecture and theory, exploring all the disciplines of architecture contextualized with contemporary trends in AI, technology and the sciences. As an opportunity to gather like-minded individuals with a singular purpose of positively striving for global change Inclusive Futures is our chance to reimagine the world together for the betterment of all. Thank you. Gustavo, thank you. Um, that was just wonderful to, to hear all those different backgrounds and all those different languages um, to see that we're truly straddling the world. Um, actually, I, I, I worked out the other day that we have a, we are so inclusive that we have um, uh, uh, committee members in every single continent in the world apart from Antarctica. So maybe next next time round we have one in Antarctica. Perhaps I should just I didn't say well maybe I, I should just say something about myself just to give some back idea about how I, hopefully I'm as inclusive as you are in some ways. I'm I'm from the UK, but my grandmother was uh, from Ireland. Uh, her name was O'Neill, hence my name, Neil. Um, I've, uh, I, I think I calculated I've spent more years living outside of the UK uh, than, than, else, than elsewhere. I was brought up in Hong Kong, uh, the UK and in Germany. Um, and I've taught in, uh, in many universities around the world, um, both in the UK, at the, at the European Graduate School in Dessau, uh, in, in the States, and now at FIU, but formerly at Harvard and uh, SUSC and SIARC and Cornell and Columbia. Um, and uh, I'm also, uh, uh, have been part of the Digital Futures Initiative in, in, in Shanghai as well. Um, so um, the only language that I can speak, I could actually say is Latin. I mean, I said, well, okay, that was, I was a translator of Alberti from Latin. So salve, salvete, that's my Italian word today, my, my Latin word today. Um, but I just want to say that is really just, I want to, first of all, thank everyone on this panel for all the hard work they've done uh, putting together this thing and, and and it's it's i think digital futures is like an iceberg what you can see on the surface is only a small fraction of what's going on there is an enormous amount of hard work that's being that's going on behind the scenes and what is so amazing about this is that everyone is doing it for free it, we we're volunteering our services and that to my mind is almost as gratifying as the fact that we are spanning the world in the in the way that we are so thank you so much for all the team that put together there are going to be challenges and glitches uh, along the way but um i think that we can forge a future despite all those things and i'm sure there'll be some very happy things as well that will emerge that we hadn't expected uh, also um so we now have a few minutes for um anyone to um ask any questions about uh, about various kind of questions um uh um, I, um, so I, if someone, if you would like to ask any questions, could you uh, forward them to um, the the chats in either Billy Billy or uh, or, or, or YouTube? Um, uh, does any do we have any questions already? Um, uh, um, so far, you... we've had a few questions come through, but I've been answering them as we go as well. Um, some would of the you... questions that we have answered of just um, how to find out about the workshops 
uh, and I've shared our social media links on Facebook. So if you are not following us on Instagram or Facebook, uh, it would be good to do so. Um, but also please visit our website frequently as it will be updated daily. That was the only question so far, but please submit your questions if you have any. And just what looking at some of the kind of comments in the chat in, in, in Arabic and Farsi and things, and it, it's just great to see that. And it's really great to hear uh, these different voices around the world. It's, it's, it's very easy to think that somehow English is the only thing. It's not at all. And it's, it's wonderful that we're embracing so many others. Um, uh, there's a question from An Angelica uh, Poncio. Are the workshops Goyana? What does that mean? <laughs> um, I think the workshops are, are free, right? So I think that's our mission. So we're, we're, we're here and available to answer all your questions. And, uh, and I'm excited to be here. And I think some of the other things are, uh, how do we find out all the, the people that are teaching? When is that gonna be posted? I think that's, that's one question. The other is, can I, how can I see all the other workshops? Are they gonna be streamed? Can I join them? You know. Who, who can answer that? I think that's Virginia, right? Uh, yeah, so I, Angelica, I think you uh, had a follow up there because the first part of your question didn't type fully in. Uh, so yeah, all of the workshops are going to be live streaming, but if you want a seat in the Zoom classroom, this is where you will follow uh, the instructions that Chow shared uh, to go up to our website and register an account and uh, apply to a workshop. You will submit uh, some images of your work, a statement of why you want to be um, in these workshops and what your interests are in architectural design, and you will um, be accepted into some of the workshops, and then you will be able to really be in the Zoom call with um, the other students. And it's important for us to provide these multiple levels for students who want to be in that Zoom call and really speak one-on-one -on -one with their instructors, but others who maybe are more shy can watch online streaming through YouTube as well. Um, um, I shared, um, hello everyone, I shared all my uh, links, uh, connections on the uh, YouTube chat where you can find my Facebook profile link and LinkedIn link as well. So if you have any questions, uh, you can reach me anytime. تحياتي ليكم جميعا انا حطيت اللينك بتاع فيسبوك ولينكد ان في شات اليوتيوب لو عندك اسئله تقدر تكلمني اي وقت 24 ساعه. يلا تحياتي الطيبه. Thank you very much. I would just I mean, maybe add to say that I think um, some of the most interesting workshops are going to be um, well, the Zaha Hadid, uh, Zaha Code one is always incredibly popular. Um, and we'll make sure that, that is live streamed. Um, also, I think the hybrid workshops will be fascinating. So what's happening in the hybrid workshops is that they're taking place online, but fabrication is taking place uh, in, in, in China and in Egypt. The main, most of them are in China, but there is also a 3D printed metal one in, in Egypt. Um, and there's also going to be uh, one that I, I'm working with, Sanford, which is going to be epic, I'm sure, because Sanford is incredible. Um, and it's going to be hosting different uh, individuals coming in. We've got a group of us, Marina, uh, Marina um, from our group, uh, and also uh, Victoria from our group, um, and Sanford and myself. And, and individuals coming in each time. That'll be a kind of theory workshop, but I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. Um, I should say that Sanford is also going to be part of the, the digital consortium, the, um, the the PhD workshop that we are we are a global platform. Each time that will be a kind of theory workshop, but I'm sure it's going to be fascinating. Um, I should say that Sanford is also going to be part of the digital consortium. The, um... Philip, I don't know if you'd like to to uh, make any um, any any sort of any comments. I think Philip's frozen. Okay. Um, uh, Chow, could, could maybe you just could clarify that the, just to re repeat the kind of timeline because I think this is important in terms of the uh, Okay. Let me let me share my screen.
So, so this is the timeline for um, the whole event, and so that there are some like key uh, time time points, like from the June twelve to July June the twenty fourth, we have our digital consortium, and on the June the twenty sixth, we have our uh, CDRF twenty twenty one conference. We uh, at the night well at at, at the the China time uh, at the night of June the 26th, we have our opening ceremonies. And, and from June the 26th to July the 3rd, um, it's mainly our workshops and also our talk series on inclusive futures. And then July the 3rd uh, is our closing ceremony. And the, 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 the following, on, on the Saturday of the following week, uh, July the 10th, um, is the opening of our exhibition. So that's the, the basic timeline for the whole event. Um, could you just also maybe go through the, um, the application process again, just to kind of remind those who've, who've joined us just recently, just so that everyone can see you one more time. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, so, so we just launched our new website. Um, uh, the website is embedded with the uh, application system and through the system, um, you as the participants can register with a permanent account and you need to get the account and sign in. Then you can, you may uh, apply workshops, you may check uh, your application status and you can also kind of, uh, well, reaching out with your, your team members and, and getting the certificates. Um, so for each participants, uh, you can select three workshops in parallel, uh, maximal, and then getting three results from the instructors. Participants. So for each participants, uh, you can select three workshops in parallel, uh, maximal, and then getting three results from the instructors. What's happening? Oh. Okay. Um, and for the three results, you have to make a decision to only mm -hmm. accept one result from the three. Uh, if you, for example, uh, you can accept the uh, acceptance result from one instructor, then you are kind of just getting ready for the workshop. But if you really want to stay in the waiting list of, uh, of the workshop, you really want to get in, then you have to wait for the second round of review, but the result could be uh, accepted or rejected in the end. So that's the, 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 the logic of the application. And for the, for, the, for, the, for the schedule of the application, uh, the application opens uh, at May uh, 18th uh, and close at May 28th. Mm -hmm. uh, during the time, we got to gradually upload and publish workshops. Uh, so you may, want to wait a little bit to make all your three uh, decisions, your selections. Um, after the application deadline, uh, the instructor is going to review the, the applicants and you will receive the results around June the 1st. Um, then you have to make a decision uh, to just to confirm the results, to confirm one result from the three. Um, if, if you if you confirm the acceptance result, then you just need to uh, preparing and getting ready for the for the whole event. Um, but if you select the waiting list result, then you have to wait for the uh, for the for the waiting list result from uh, coming from uh, coming at the uh, June June the tenth, and then uh, getting your final result. So that's the, the schedule. Hey, Chow, there's an important question yeah. to ask. If yeah. I'm a student, what do I present or have ready so that I can be a part of the workshops? What materials do we need? Okay, um, well, we last year we asked students to prepare materials uh, specifically for each workshop, but for this year, we only ask the students to submit some general information uh, about their background, their academic bios, uh, and three images for the working sample, work samples, those kinds of uh, information. And based on those information, the uh, instructors can review and select the, the, uh, 
um, the students for, for his or her workshops. And the whole process is, uh, is, is a brand review. The instructors won't see the name, uh, the na nationalities or the genders of the applicants. They only evaluate the applicants based on their academic and their design work. Uh, one last question. Why did we do it that way? We did it that way so that we can get more participation or? Well, we, we, we kind of want to make the whole um, application um, process being more inclusive. Uh, so the, the, the instructors won't decide uh, which students they want based on their uh, academic background uh, it, uh, and to give those uh, the students from uh, let's say less privileged uh, uh, regions to really get into those uh, advanced workshops. So just to repeat, there's a, you have to submit a, a sample of three images, not a whole portfolio. Yeah. Um, uh, no, no. Yeah, just just three images. Yeah. Um, and what I would say is if, if, if anyone doesn't get into their workshop, then you can live stream. In fact, you can live stream anyway. And I, I hope that uh, uh, everyone will be um, watching and following other workshops at the same time. There are amazing, uh, uh, an incredible array of different um, workshops this year um, in, in many different languages. Um, Philip, I just wanted to ask you if you wanted to say something. We, we, we unfortunately couldn't hear you last time, but... Uh, um, oh. It's not here. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, do we have any any further questions? Um, well, I just wanted to say something quickly. Uh, I actually got. I actually came on to helping on digital futures because I saw Neil and last year's conference, and I was inspired to reach out. I actually went on YouTube and I asked questions and then I kept watching and I didn't sleep and I kept asking questions. But what was exciting was that I actually created a conversation with my network. And then a few months later, I'm a part of the team. So please feel free to uh, ask questions, to, to participate and to share. And I'm very thankful for Neil to almost, uh, you know, not sleep for a few weeks to make this happen and the entire team. So thank you, Neil. And I, I encourage everyone to, to be happy and let's work together. <laughs> thank you, Gustavo. Don't thank me. It's, this is a team effort. This is really everyone all together. And, and what is so gratifying is when I hear all these different um, languages from around the world, um, it's really very much a team effort, a very kind of bottom up team effort. Um, uh, we have a question here. Um, uh, how, what is the maximum number of workshops per student that you can take as a participant? Last year was only one. I think it's still one. Is that right, Chow? Yes. Yes. But you can still you can still uh, uh, watch online stream. uh, right. streaming, and um, you can uh, also uh, give uh, um, put questions in, into the chat. So there's a chance that that you you could talk to you could connect with some of the most um, uh, famous and brilliant people around the world. Um, I forgot to mention that Patrick Schumacher will also be part of our um, our, our theory uh, workshop in, in the digital consortium. Um, and I would I would encourage everyone to 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 follow that. That that is going to be absolutely astonishing. And even if you haven't heard of these people, like Slavoj Žižek, trust me, they're good. Um, and I'm really delighted that we have such an incredible um, lineup um, of, of, of people on that theme. Um, do we have a, um, a, any other questions? Um, can I comment? <laughs> yes, maybe I could invite comments um, uh, only if you can comment also in Arabic, uh, Ahmed, okay? Uh, maybe I yes. can invite you all from, 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 from the, all our regional managers just to, go and, uh, to kind of say something. Um, my greeting from Cairo. Um, my last comment is that we as Digital Futures believe in you, believe in everyone and especially believe in the earth. So please believe in yourself and believe in your thoughts, ideas, and so on. We will be waiting for you through the conference, the discussions, talks, uh, and workshops as well. So um, don't hesitate to ask. Don't hesitate to uh, share your thoughts, questions, or whatever you have. We will be there to help you and serve you uh, for the best. See you all.
تحياتي الطيبة ليكم هنستناكم إن شاء الله خلال المؤتمر أنت موجود عشان تتعلم فأهم حاجة تؤمن بنفسك زي ما احنا بنؤمن بيك أنا شخصيا أؤمن بيك جدا وخاصة يعني دايما القيادة عمرها ما كانت للناس الكبيرة يعني فياما قادة غيروا التاريخ كانوا شباب صغيرين تحت العشرين يلا نراكم على خير Camille, um, uh, I don't know who would like to go next. Um, uh, maybe Ripple. I don't know whether you'd, uh, you'd like to say something in, uh, in, in Hindi. Should I say it in Hindi or should, uh, should yeah, I? Yeah, both, both in Hindi and English, yeah. Okay. Um, I think I would like to encourage more people to participate, uh, basically, like particularly from India. A lot of people are not aware of uh, like the computational world uh, we might be like dealing with uh, so many things in general and might be masters in computational uh, computer science but then uh, when it's when we talk about architecture and computation i think a lot of people needs to be more aware of this in india and i would definitely encourage and try to inspire more people uh, to be a part of this community and at least uh, you know stay aware uh, about the rest of uh, the world and some of uh you know some cool stuff that we see around uh, maybe ask more questions i think uh, a lot of people uh, in india they feel quite intimidated sometimes so i would definitely ask them, uh, ask them uh, to you know feel free and uh, comment and ask more questions in general you know um so uh, i would just like to say in hindi uh, uh, that um Basha, yeah, fair. Please, Saval Pucho, Jitna Hosakta, Jitna Hosakta, Hamako, Madat Kanikil, Tayarhe, and please, for your hesitation, Matrako, up Nander, Yahape language, a barrier, stay aware and uh, try your best in a way. Yeah, that's what I would say. Thank you, Ripple. I, and maybe I should also suggest that everybody who's watching can spread the word also to their colleagues, because I think that's you know, really how, how we um, can spread the message. Last year, we were very fortunate for, the, for Young India helped to kind of promote the word. Um, I was giving a lecture for them in, uh, in, in India just a few weeks ago, and it's yeah. wonderful how we can kind of bridge these different sort of cultures. Um, uh, let's, let's move on and uh, maybe um, is Maria, Maria, could you like say something in, in, in Russian? Yeah, not only in Russian. I, I really uh, think that uh, Inclusive Futures is a fantastic initiative, very exclusive. And uh, this idea of really knocking each door in each small city or the village is uh, absolutely unique and giving everything up like very freely and uh, really accessible. So basically, maybe I was thinking that the only limit that we have now is the internet connection. Uh, not language anymore, but I hope that every village and every uh, building block and every house or the hut might find a way to connect and to listen or watch us uh, in the uh, recording. But also regarding the participation in the workshop, I think it's uh, also for us important like to be inclusive, not only spread the knowledge from us, but gain the knowledge from you. So that's also very interesting when we are like basically knocking to your door and you're participating in the workshop and we are researching, learning and doing things together. So basically your input is also very important. And that's for me, the, every time the take, when I do any work with the students, I kind of uh, take my students as a researchers, as a partners within the development of the project. And I think that's, Kind of the take that we will also be doing in a workshop at least that i'm preparing as well so uh maybe to just i will add some words in russian if uh, there are some uh non-english speakers uh, following us uh да я повторюсь может быть еще раз uh подключайтесь к нам мы будем очень рады uh скоммуницировать вам наши мысли и послушать вас и это действительно уникальная возможность подключиться к такой инициативе которая собирает самые яркие, самые интересные голоса по всему миру. Так что очень надеемся, что будет большое участие и с российской стороны также. Спасибо большое. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope to see a lot of people working with us collaboratively. 
Thanks, Maria. I, I mean, I think in what you made an important point. It's not really a center and periphery. We want to make the we want to kind of break down that and make it into a network. <clears throat> I think some of the most important um, panel discussions we've had on our Saturday sessions have been one where we extended and I mean the one on Bangladesh was absolutely fascinating. I think finding out about the world in that 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 part of the world and their concerns was incredibly interesting. I was also very much taken by the um, the session that we had on uh, uh, emerging designers from the Arab world. I think that was um, that was amazing. So I mean, I, I could um, uh, uh, call on Aya to say, say a few words. Um, uh, Aid Mubarak, I can say my, my a few words in, in uh, Arabic, which is also the same in Farsi, I understand. Yes, thank you, Neil. You said it super well. Uh, I would like to also wish everyone a great Eid for whoever is uh, celebrating around the region. Um, and I would just like to say from my conversations with different student bodies uh, around the region, there's a great uh, sense of excitement uh, to join us this year and to learn from all the experts that we have from our, all around the world. So uh, this is something very uh, motivating for all of us to see. And yeah, I would just like to uh, let everyone know to feel free to reach to all of us if they have any kinds of questions. Um, and yeah, in general, I think it's a great opportunity for instructors in our region to show off the kind of work they're doing here and also a great opportunity for the participants to learn more about uh, what is going on on a global scale so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing more students from around here thank you thank you um so marina maybe um uh, i should also say that also that um uh, we're gonna have uh, before marina says uh, we're also gonna have a, a kind of try and do a, a workshop will there be a workshop on cl inclusivity itself in a sense we want to make it also a topic of what we're addressing um marina would you like to would you like to say something yes thank you neil uh yeah just to say that uh reality you are the, digi the digital futures. I mean, all of you that are watching now and all the participants, you are the digital futures. So we hope to see many students from South America this year. And we have a workshop in Spanish and Portuguese and also in English. And we look forward to seeing you. So thank you very much. And I will say, it, now I'm going to switch to Spanish. So, eh, solo decirles que ustedes son los, los futuros digitales, no solo nosotros, y que esperamos ver muchos estudiantes de, de Sudamérica este año. Tenemos workshops de muy alto nivel en español, en portugués y en inglés, y esperamos verlos pronto. So, entonces, eh, muchas gracias a todos. And I will try to switch to Portuguese. Please uh, be patient, all the <laughs> Brazilians and Portuguese that are watching this. So, um, vocês são futuros digitais. Esperamos ver muchos estudiantes de América del Sur este año. Tenemos workshops en español a portugués. Esperamos verlos. Muito obrigado. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I'm always kind of reminded when I hear, hear Brazilian Portuguese that is, is that uh, the game of football was um, invented in England but turned into an art form in, in Brazil. And now I think it's been, along with Which cricket, the field of sports has been a kind of way of connecting. Um, uh, Antonio, maybe uh, could you say it, uh, a few words? Yes, well, um, like you like you mentioned earlier, um, last year I participated in one of the workshops, the theory workshop um, that was uh, involving a large number of uh, of participants, around a hundred something, and was generating a very very vibrant conversation and a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, creating a lot of connection, a sort of uh, transnational community of people that that had just. Uh, met occasionally no and actually i realized how later i uh, from that community originated in the workshop i got involved into digital futures which evolved into another community uh, in parallel last year i was i was giving an online workshop that is similar to the one that i'm gonna um, uh, give in digital futures this year and the participants were also uh, all around the world from uh, the United States to, um, to Malaysia. And uh, uh, with some of the participants, I actually met later uh, during the year once, uh, especially with one Peruvian participant, I met in Copenhagen uh, months later, and we are planning to give the workshop together. So he's gonna, together with me and my partner, he's gonna uh, give the workshop. So. 
ultimately what I wanted to, to suggest is that this is not only a way to spread the knowledge and share ideas, but it's also a way to create community, to create new networks, new synergies, and collaborate together in one way, in the other, and then flipping the, the, the transmission of knowledge in, in, different, in different ways. So um, I, I really encourage everyone that is going to participate this year also then to reach out to the community, to participate, to, to engage in multiple conversations and new initiatives within, within digital futures and beyond. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, Neil. I'm back. Philip, hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. All right. I'm traveling, so uh, the, the, the computer is out of power. I changed to my mobile phone. I think uh, it's a great uh, uh, to take uh, to listen to all the uh, the, uh, the manager around the world uh, would like to host uh, different uh, hubs. Uh, I think more than 10 hubs right now around the world. That's great. Uh, one more thing I want to add is um, Steel Digital Future is a dynamic uh, platform. We have not only just stay together, but also we want to uh, play a leading role uh, in the future of uh, digital in architecture. So that's very important, I think, uh, to keep the quality of all the workshops and to keep the academic um, contribution from all the researchers uh, who can um, um, and publish their papers uh, in uh, the CDRF uh, um, um, a publication uh, of this year. So this year, the, the topic for C uh, CDRF is um, uh, material intelligence. Actually, we received more than 150 papers. That is around uh, three times uh, to last year. So that's a great uh, promotion uh, for the, the groups. Right now, we invited uh, different um, uh, uh, admission members to review the papers. Every paper needs at least three uh, reviewers gave uh, comments. So that's need time. Uh, so uh, I want to announce uh, all the, the, the people who promote, uh, who sent uh, papers to, to the future should be patient. And we want to uh, give the, the review result in the next two weeks. And this year we want to publish around 30 papers on uh, CDRS, around 25 to 30 papers. I think the quality of the papers really high and uh, also uh, based on that proceedings we want to uh, uh, to publish another book named uh, material intelligence and also uh, some of the um, uh, theorists contribute their papers and make some discussion on whether material intelligence or immaterial intelligence i think that's kind of the, the the this kind of um, negotiation and discussion is really interesting. So um, that is something I want to uh, encourage all the young members here, not only um, attract the, uh, uh, the people to participate to the workshops, but also I'm looking forward, um, uh, you can join different talks and join the consortium um, uh, PhD courses. This year, I think the course uh, organized really high quality and uh, every day, we will invite uh, very important uh, theorists or the researchers coming to the PhD uh, courses and make a keynote lecture and followed by a panel discussion uh, around uh, three to four hours for uh, each day. So that's really compact, uh, but really high, really high quality. So uh, we also want to invite, uh, uh, introduce this platform to more universities and uh, who uh, these universities, more universities can contribute their PhD courses to this platform. So, uh, and also I, I noticed uh, today, Matthias De Campo is here. Uh, would you like to say something, Matthias, to Digital Futures 2021? Hi, Philip, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Please, I was Matthias. absolutely unprepared, so. <laughs> To put uh, get put on stage here was just listening actually, but it sounds like it's going to be an amazing program and a continuation of the efforts of the last ten years. A very a very valuable and and worthy uh, approach. And as the entire topic of inclusion and diversity has gained uh, traction in also architectural circles, I'm happy that we are um, approaching this topic in a larger scale this year. Uh, making everything more accessible to everyone and spreading hopefully good ideas about architecture throughout the world. 
So thanks a lot for everyone for the amazing effort and the great program. Very much looking forward to work on this too and be part of it. So thanks for including me again. Thank, Thank you, you Matthias. Matthias, uh, actually um, visited Shanghai more than five, six times uh, at the very beginning of Digital Futures. So thanks a lot for his uh, contribution and also um, 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 uh, his partner as well. Uh, they really uh, give uh, a lot of help uh, to digital futures. So thanks a lot. And also thanks for your, for your future contribution to digital future. And thank you so much. Can I and ask how about say the same yeah. again in, in Chinese, maybe? Yes. Oh, 大家好,我是袁老师,正是你们也熟悉的。今年的这个Digital Futures呢,会分成三个时区,十个不同的为大家看到,包括开罗啊,埃及啊,哥本哈根啊,也包括迈阿密啊,南美,也包括这个密西根等等啊,全国有十个点,每个点都有十到十五个workshop,所以今年
uh, and the water by many, many hundreds, uh, not thousands of contributors in the past year. We're hoping that this year uh, we'll be able to um, um, uh, arrive to maybe a new level of conversation. So very excited to be part of the team. Thank you. Thank you so much. To Vienna. I think Vienna is one of the most important uh, contributors last year, helped to organize uh, the really big event. And also in the past few years, uh, she actually visited Shanghai more than five, four or five times. And also uh, I can see the uh, growing process of Vienna from a PhD students to a very young, uh, really good uh, researcher. And also right now, she is really su successfully influential, play leading roles in a lot of events, not only in the futures, but also in Europe, uh, in the States. So I'm very happy to see that because every one of you right now, uh, um, the organizer, the manager, really young, but we already see in the past 10 years, a lot of people growing up on this platform uh, and you contribute this platform, also you're learning from this platform. So I think the future is something we want to share our dreams, um, and, uh, not only because of the digital future is important, but also the friendship around the world is really important. I think this, the, the culture of learning uh, from, the, uh, from the other people and contributes to other people, and also we have a lot of female voice here is really important. So that's the, uh, I think the style of this platform. And I'm looking forward, all of you can, uh, can contribute what you have to, uh, to, to this platform to help the other peoples. So thanks a lot to Bianna. Thanks a lot. Th thank you for it. But maybe just I'll say a final word and we should wrap up. But you know, it's, I, I want to first of all, thank everybody who's been part of this organization in putting this together. It's there's so much work has got into this, um, uh, especially to Chow on the website who had a few sleepless. <laughs> My students yeah, yeah. In, in, in the University of Nottingham used to say, you can sleep when you're dead. That's a motto, I think, for, for all architects. But uh, there's a huge amount of work that's gone into this, and I'm really uh, gratified to find everyone. And just to stress that everything, everyone is doing everything for free. I think that's an incredible gesture. Um, I say for free, but actually it's not totally for free in some ways because actually there is something you get feedback, some incredible gratification that you get from knowing that you've made a difference. I mean, last year, I remember when I opened up our theory workshop, there was someone from Lima, Peru, who kind of uh, said, hello, professor, I'm from Lima, Peru. That was an amazing thing for me to realize that we were reaching out all over the uh, all over the world. More recently this year, um, uh, Ahmed once uh, um, uh, had a, a clubhouse conversation where I was able to find out from how uh, how students of architecture in Egypt were were really appreciating the idea the the way in which we were disseminating knowledge, and I think that was that was so gratifying to hear. So it is an amazing thing to 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 um, to be part of, and the, fee the, the the feeling that we're making a difference is is important. I just want to simply sort of say that that uh, to all our audience out there is that we're, we're interested in the digital future. But you guys are our digital future, you know, and I hope that you'll be able to carry on the baton um, when, 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 when we give way. It's, oh, it's amazing also to see this uh, regeneration within the group itself and how some of our students last year have become on board to be part of, our, of the organization. So we look forward to this digital future. We don't know where it's going to go exactly, but we look forward to it. And let's see what what, what grows out of it, what comes out of this. Um, uh, Matthias commented about how it's bringing up a child. Uh, it's I also sort of see it as planting a seed. And we don't know where it's going to get to. It's going to grow into something. And and who knows? But every, every, every big thing has a small beginning. And uh, we had a small beginning, but we're getting bigger. So I, anyway. Um, Please uh, uh, watch this space, uh, follow our, our, us on Instagram and elsewhere and see what's happening. We are gradually putting things together. Everything's not ready just yet, but it will be very soon. And it's going to be an incredible event. So I really looking forward to it. And I just want to thank again, um, all our organizers and thank you as our, with, without, without our followers, we will be nothing either. So thank you also for following us. Um, education is a human right. It shouldn't be the privilege of the wealthy. And we want to spread ideas throughout the world for free. Um, we, we, we want to welcome you to Digital Futures, to Inclusive Futures, uh, Digital Futures 2021. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Salam. Salam. <laughs>